All right, in this lesson, we're going to go over the equity method of accounting. In particular, we're going to go over the investment in investee account. This is an account that we would put in our books to keep track of our investment in another company. Um, an example would be that I'm a corporation. I decide to invest 35% in company A. And so I would have a new account called investment in company A because when I do my journal entries for that investment, I would debit investment in company A for X amount of dollars and I would credit cash or equipment or whatever I give them uh, for that 35% ownership. So here's our example. Uh, we have a million dollar purchase price, so we're purchasing company A for a million dollars. However, the book value or the, of the net assets is only $700,000. How do we get that? Well, we take all of their assets, we take all of their liabilities, we subtract the liabilities from their assets, and we get a book value of seven hundred thousand. Sorry, a book value of two million dollars. That's what it's worth. Thirty-five percent ownership would mean that we should have paid seven hundred thousand, but in this case, we've paid a million dollars. So, in our last lesson, we talked about this idea of if we pay more than it's worth, what do we do with it? Well, there's two things that we can do with it. In this case, we have $300,000. We can either allocate part, all, or none of the $300,000 to undervalued assets, or we can allocate part, all, or none of the $300,000 to an account called Goodwill. Goodwill is something that we review every year for impairment, and if we find that there is an impairment, we reduce Goodwill uh, by the impairment charge. Now, this undervalued asset, now let's assume that we have a building and when we buy the company, we're finding out that the building uh, is undervalued by $300,000, okay? So we could allocate this $300,000 to the building, okay? And so if we do that, we're gonna need to amortize our 300,000 based on the useful life of the building that's left. So if this was equipment and the equipment was, let's say, 10 year life, but by the time we buy into that company, there's only five more years left, then we would depreciate or amortize it over five years. In this case, let's assume that we buy, a, uh, we buy the corporation and there's 40 years life on the building, but by the time we buy it, there's only 30 years left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our extra 30, 300,000 and amortize it over 30 years or $10,000 a piece. Now, quick note here, the reason why we're amortizing and not necessarily depreciating it is because we are, as the big company that owns the 35% ownership, we're gonna amortize it on our books, not the books of company A. So really, we're kind of doing an intangible um, amortization. We've got an intangible, the intangible is the increased value of that asset that we don't own, okay? So $10,000. What do we do with that $10,000? Well, we are going to reduce our investment in investee or investment in company A by $10,000 every single year for 30 years, okay? So that's the first thing that we're gonna do. So if we kind of started here, we would start with a million dollars in an account called investment in company A. So we have an investment in company A, we start with a million dollars. Why? Because we purchased our 35% our share of company A for a million dollars. The first adjustment that we're gonna make, we're gonna make an adjustment for the undervalued asset. So let's say we buy this on January 1st, now it's Jan December 31st, it's at the end of the year, and so we need to make some adjustments to make this up to date. Okay, we're gonna bring this up to date. So. We already said that in this problem, we're gonna take $300,000, allocate that to the undervalued asset. Our undervalued asset is a building. It's got 30 more years left, so we're gonna amortize that over 30 years to get us $10,000. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce our investment in company A by $10,000. Why? Because we've lost kind of the usefulness of it by $10,000. So really now our excess, our excess in book value that's allocated to undervalued asset after we've done this is 290. 300 minus 10,000, okay? So 10,000 there. 
The other two entries that we're gonna make, we're gonna make it one entry for the net income or loss from the investee, and then we're going to make a dividend adjustment. So remember in the equity method of accounting, we talked about that if there is a net income in the investee, we are going to increase our investment account in the investee by our proportion of income. So let's just assume for this case that our investee company A has a net income of $100,000 for the year. Because we own 35% of it, we're gonna multiply by 35% and we get 35,000. So if technically speaking we own 35% investment of company A and they made 100,000, it's as if we made $35,000. We might not get a 35,000, but it's as if we did get $35,000, okay? So Equity method of accounting says we would increase our investment in company A by $35,000 positively because it is a net income, so that would go up by $35,000. Now, we're gonna defer a little bit, we're not gonna, or we'll go away from this for a minute. If there was a net loss, we would do the same thing, but we would decrease our investment in investee account or investment in company A. So let's assume that instead of a $100,000 gain, we had a $100,000 loss at 35%, we would get $35,000 net loss attributed to our investment in investee. So I'm gonna put it right here, but we would bring down that balance by 35,000. So if we were running a loss here, we would have a million dollars here, we would have $10,000 here, and then we have a negative 35,000. So we already have a negative 45,000 for the year. Let's stick with our example here with the net gains. Let's, so once we've done this, the net income or net loss for the um, investee attributed to our investment in the investee, the last part that we're gonna do is the dividends. Dividends are not income under the equity method. It is a reduction in our investment in the investee. And so in this case, if dividends are paid to the investor, we reduce the investor's account by the amount of dividends we receive. And so let's just say that we receive $15,000 in dividends, right? Because they had a $35,000 income. They said, hey, we're gonna give you $15,000 and then we're gonna keep the 20,000 to uh, make our business better, to invest in our business. So they give us $15,000 in dividends, so we reduce our investment in company A. And so what do we have left? At the end of the year, what's our investment in investee or company A? Well, we would have a million dollars, we would subtract 10, which gives us 990. We would add um, $35,000, that would give us $1,025,000. And then if we subtract $15,000, we would get $1,000,000. $10,000, I hope, okay? So we started with a million dollars, we subtract 10,000 because of our amortization of good, uh, amortization of the building. We add back 35,000 because that's the net income attributed to our investment in the investee. We subtract 15,000 because we're receiving $15,000 back in the form of dividends. So at the end of the day, we've increased our investment in company's A account by $10,000. So hopefully this lesson will help you understand the equity method and in particular understand the calculation of the investment in company A.